Hello and welcome. In this webinar, I'd like to share with you how you can implement an effective social skills program at home with your child with autism, but including all of your children in shared fun activities. We're going to be thinking about how you can adapt a tried and tested social skills program called Lego Therapy at home. And by way of an introduction, Lego Therapy is a program where children work together to build Lego models. And through this structured um, planned activity, they gain social skills that are very important for day to day life, such as turn taking, collaborating together, and social communication. Social skills are learned. Typically developing children seem to learn them very easily. They learn them spontaneously and readily apply these skills to playing with other children. They learn from each other. In children with autism, however, it's a different story. They play and interact differently, which means it's hard to engage with others. They tend to play alone or in parallel alongside others with the same equipment and activities. Their language use is different. It's less social and they tend to use more learnt stereotyped language, but they don't always develop their own creative storylines in play. Much of their play is very repetitive. It tends to be quite boring for other children, just doing the same thing time and time again. And in addition, children with autism have great difficulty collaborating with others, turn-taking, and working towards a shared goal. Now, some of this is to do with how the, autism, the autistic child thinks differently. They have a different way of understanding others and a different way of perceiving what others might be thinking. So for example, children with autism, it's, it's as if they think we all have a shared brain. So the child considers that you know what he knows, so he doesn't need to tell you. You might have noticed that your child sometimes gets cross if you don't know something that he thinks you should or you do it in the wrong way. And whereas typically developing children can guess what others might be thinking or planning to do by their actions, that's a, that's a great area of difficulty for the child with autism. And because they, share, they don't share the same perspective as others, they have poor perspective taking skills. This makes communicating and playing with others very difficult. So in children with autism, learning to relate, learning to be social is not automatic. But the good news is there's a lot that we can teach these children. They can learn to interact and play with others, but Activities must be fun and mo motivating in and of themselves. And for you at home with your families, the good news is brothers and sisters can be wonderful teachers and often really enjoy being involved with their brother and sister who has autism. So one of the important considerations when building a social skills program is to choose activities that your child is naturally attractive to. So it's important to consider what, um, what are the elements, the common elements and features of those activities. And very often for children with autism, those activities, that, the ones that they really like, have got a strong visual component, they're often very visual, and they're often predictable. So things like Lego, computers, puzzles, all of those sorts of things, are often very attractive to children with autism. And that is why um, Lego therapy 
uh, has been found to be effective, or that's one of the reasons why we've been found, it's been found to be effective, is because it taps into the natural interests of the children who have autism. So we're going to be thinking now a little bit about how we can adapt some of these principles for use at home in an effective play-based fun activities social skills program. So just a little background to Lego therapy and how it developed. Um, the gentleman who originally originated the idea was um, a clinical neuropsychologist in 2003. He worked with children with autism and he noticed one day in his waiting room a chance observation two young children playing together with Lego. The thing that really stood out to him was the togetherness of the play, the way that they were collaborating, the way they were engaging together. And he had a light bulb moment and through that observation he has developed an effective social skills program that has been found to be transferable to real world life situations and many settings. It's a little bit different from other social skills groups. Um, one major difference is that rather than focusing on the child's weaknesses, which is a feature of many social skills groups, it's called a Lego club. So the emphasis is on fun. The emphasis is on producing and doing activities that the child will enjoy. The main goal of Lego therapy is to build those types of skills that help autistic children get along better with peers and siblings, play together and collaborate. It's really important as children grow older that they learn these skills because everybody, no matter how hard they find it, at some level really wants friends and relationships with others. One important proviso at this stage to introduce is that um, for your child to benefit from Lego therapy, they need to have some verbal skills. They need also to be able to follow some visual and verbal instructions. Now these can be very simple, but they do need to be able to follow some. So other goals, very important goals, that we work on in Lego therapy that children with autism do find difficult. Number one, sharing attention. Children with autism tend to follow their own focus of attention. So sharing attention is difficult, but in Lego therapy, it's something that we work on. Listening and paying attention to others. Understanding more of what's said and also using expressive language is another goal that we work on increasing eye contact and other nonverbal skills, expressing feelings in an appropriate way rather than having a meltdown. Also problem solving. This is a big area of difficulty if you have autism and limited verbal skills, as is repairing communication that's broken down. And also very important skills, we learn taking turns and patience, waiting for somebody else to have a turn before you can have another go. Lego therapy has been found to be highly effective through many research projects. Most of them have been school-based and have shown things such as long-lasting peer relationships, and generalization of skills into the playground. But also there have been a small number of studies of Lego therapy and its use at home in families. And the sorts of um, observations that have been made are that after just six weekly sessions with the autistic child, one sibling and a parent acting as facilitator, the following changes occurred. Improved family relationships were noticed 
and many of the simple interaction rules that the child learnt in the Lego sessions were transferable to daily interactions between siblings, which basically meant everyone was getting along better together and there were less squabbles and the autistic child had more strategies for sorting out problems when they went wrong. So overall, there were improvements in the behaviour of the child with autism. And in addition, very importantly, everybody understood each other better in terms of their underlying communication and interaction needs and strategies to support interaction and communication. And that included um, the mum, the siblings, and the child with autism. So all round good outcomes for a family-based therapy that was set up and run by parents. So thinking now a little bit about Lego clubs, Lego therapy. Some of the features about the activities. As we introduced at the beginning, um, one of the very important features is that children have to communicate with each other in order to solve a problem. And that problem is building a shared model. And that building happens in pairs of children or in small groups of three children. The activities are highly structured and this includes each child having a specific clear role. There are group rules that everyone must follow and these are written and always on display every session and everybody works together and because the goal is the shared project and building the end result it works. Sometimes you may need to teach your child with autism some preliminary skills. Things like matching pieces. You might say to your child, can you find another one like this? Or matching a brick to one in a picture. Oh, we need one to find one that looks like this brick. Find motor skills, putting pieces together and learning how to press hard. Imitating, seeing if the child can create a model that looks like the one that you've made. Also, very importantly, and something that the child may find hard, turn taking, waiting for somebody else to take a turn and then being able to take their turn. And also collaborating, not always insisting that he has his own way, but sometimes letting other people decide or collaborating. What should we build? Shall we agree? All important skills to learn first. The things you need, lots of families will have them available or certainly easily to hand. So you'll need a sheet of Lego club rules. Handy if they can be laminated. Sometimes children get a bit cross initially if they're needing to follow simple rules. Um, if obviously if they're laminated, it's not quite so easy to shred the bit, the piece of paper or rip it up. Um, every child will need a, a, a little card describing their role. And the three roles are builder, supplier and engineer. And we'll talk a little more about those later. For the Lego club to be successful, a parent or an adult will need to be there to act as the facilitator. You'll need a Lego kit. Something like the classic we pictured, there's a number of classic, classic kits, um, can be a great value way to start because they include several models and several sets of instructions so they can keep you going for quite some while. You need to pull out the instructions for the model that you're working on. You need the relevant Lego pieces, not lots extra, just the ones you need, and if possible, put them on a tray because that creates a clearly defined area for the child and it's visually clear. And also a baseboard um, for the children to construct the model on. So thinking now about the roles. 
you need to produce little cards like this, one for each child. The engineer. My job, so the job of the engineer, is reading the instructions, making sure that the builder doesn't see them, so that the builder actually has to listen to the instructions of the engineer, telling the builder which pieces he needs and how to construct them, listening to the builder if he has questions, but not actually touching the br bricks himself or giving visual clues about which bricks will be needed. So very much reliant on the engineer's communication skills, quite a challenging role. The supplier, his job is to listen to the engineer about what the bricks, what bricks are needed, find the bricks and give the bricks to the builder. So the supplier is like the middleman in between the engineer and the builder. And his role is very much listening and understanding and acting accordingly with less of a need to actually communicate himself. And finally, the builder. His job is to take the bricks from the supplier, listen to the engineer about what to do with them and build the model. So those are the three roles. So it may be that you have two children or you want to start your project with two children. If that is the case, then you would start with the builder and the supplier. So in this scenario, the supplier should be prompted by the builder and not the parent helper. So the parent helper or the facilitator has the same background role with two or three children. So the builder should ask for each piece and not just take it from the supplier. And it's important to switch roles every few steps or every few moments or after completing each component part, depending on what's most suitable for the project that you're working on. Switching roles adds a bit of variety, keeps everybody interested, especially if a child has a particular preference for a role. So thinking about the rules, for younger children, they're very simple. So just making sure that everybody cleans up together at the end. Also safety rules, not putting Lego in your mouth, but also, the emphasis on collaboration, we're going to build this Lego model together. For older children, rules are a little more complex and they're very much around appropriate communication and appropriate emotional regulation and behaviour. So simply explaining what to do. Okay, describing the communication that's needed, what to do if things go wrong. The importance of being polite, of asking for help when needed, of taking the responsibility to fix things that have broken. The role of the parent facilitator, a very important role, very much a background role, but it's really important that you have the skills clearly defined in your mind. So let's start with talking about what the role is not. The role is not to point out what the problems are um, and what's happened when, thing goes, when things go wrong. Rather, it's important that the facilitator highlights the problem and then helps the children to come up with their own solutions. Because what we're aiming for is for the child to problem solve breakdowns in communication and things going wrong, so that when similar things happen in a less structured setting, the child has some, school, some, some, some skills and some tools in their toolkit that they can rely on to sort out communication problems that have broken down. So what you have to help you are the rules and very often your role will simply involve bringing the children's attention back to the role rules and helping them to work out what they should do. So if the children come up with a solution, even if you're not sure that it will work, 
it's important that you try it first, um, maybe with some, some suggested adaptions, but the, one of the important things is that the children begin to problem solve for themselves without always relying on us as adults to tell them what to do. So there are four main important things that you'll be doing as the parent facilitator. So the first one is helping the, ch the child with autism through that group develop social skills. And we've talked a little bit about this, relying on those rules, because if, you're, if you can point the children in the direction of an objective rule, it's better for their learning and makes them less dependent on you as a prompter if they can keep those rules in their mind and go back to them. Encouraging the children to use more complex and sophisticated language. You might say something like, oh, I wonder what you think it looks like. Oh, could you could describe that a bit more? Always avoid direct questions, because if you use an indirect question, you're much more likely to get a more complex, more a fuller response um, from the children. Another very important role is to praise appropriate behavior. It's very important how you do this and that you remember always to be specific, saying clearly what you're praising the child for. For example, well, Sam, that was excellent turn taking. Joe, that was really good waiting. So the child knows exactly what it is you're praising them for. And finally, the fourth important role is to prompt problem solving. Um, so as an issue occurs, you might need to break it down and help the child understand exactly what's gone on and what's gone wrong and why it's all fallen apart. So a little explanation like, well, Jack is upset because Fred snatched the brick from him. What could we do to make it better? So you're clarifying for the child with autism what's gone wrong, because often they won't see that for themselves. So how about choosing a model? I would go for something really simple at first, so that the emphasis is on learning the rules, learning the structure of the activity, and not so much on a very complicated model. So maybe as simple as a multicolored tower. So you just have to choose the colors of the bricks and all the bricks are the same size. You might want to think about, want to think about making your own models and photographing the instructions yourself or getting your older children to do that. And if you use a Lego kit with their printed instructions, think about trying to cover all of the steps but the current one just because it's less visually confusing. But the Lego website has all instructions that you can download for free, which is also a very useful resource. And again, I would enlist the help of your older children in printing them off and um, cutting them up, perhaps if you just want one step at a time or laminating them, perhaps get them writing out the rules for you as well. Okay, so not all children love Lego. So there are some alternatives. So for example, you could use a jewelry kit, you could make a necklace and um, produce some little instructions and have a corresponding set of beads for the, young, you know, for the children to build together. You could think about a cooking task where the end goal is clearly defined and the different steps and the ingredients that you need. Or some other toys, I've used um, these toys instant blocks very successfully in the past. Um, I used them with a child whose fine motor skills were quite poor. Um, it, they, they were much easier for him to get hold of than the Lego and he really enjoyed building some of these models with two of his friends. So in terms of running your, your Lego group at home, um, Frequency, first of all, I would run your group at least once a week, maybe twice. 
preferably twice if you possibly can. Um, I would decide on your duration at the beginning, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the age and the stage and the attention skills of the child. And even if it's going well, if you've decided on half an hour, stick with half an hour because it's just too easy if the going's good to just think, oh, we'll keep going for another five minutes, another 10 minutes, and then it all goes pear-shaped. And then sometimes people are, are less motivated to join in next time. When you're thinking about the time that you want to allocate, include time in that bank of time to set up and clear away. Think about the, leg, the um, autistic child's need for structure. Always use the same room, the same space each time to, pr to provide predictability and call it your family Lego club, not therapy or social skills, because this really does put the focus on enjoyment and play. There are lots and lots of free resources on the internet. You can have a look at YouTube. There's lots of little clips of um, children involved in Lego therapy, which will just give you some ideas and hopefully some inspiration. And also there, there are, there's loads that, that's freely downloadable, things like the roll cards for the supplier and the engineer and the builder, the rules, they're all there for you. Websites such as Twinkle, um, Elsa Support, which is a Lego based resource sheet, the Times Education Su Supplement also has some resource sheets, as does um, Cornwall County Council. The, their Lego therapy pack is lovely and simple and just provides all that you need. And there pictured for you is the original Lego therapy book. If you want to read more, there's plenty of information in that book. So it just goes to for me now to say, Thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you have a go and please email me and let me know if you do. I'd love to hear how you get on. Thank you very much. Goodbye.